Hey guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how I created this <laughs> evil fish look. It's actually supposed to be the angler fish from Nemo. You know when they're swimming like really deep and they see a light and they're like, I see a light. And they think it's something sweet and then, yeah, you know, like if you see Nemo, you know. So that is what this is. <laughs> So jumping right into it, we're taking our little Michaels styrofoam head and I just took an old hat that I never wear and I am hot gluing it to the styrofoam head so that it stays in place. I could have definitely used a bald cap but I couldn't find one and I actually thought this was going to be a lot better because the broom was going to make it sturdy and I'm going to pile stuff on top of it. So I had this old piece that I made last year. It was actually supposed to be part of last year's spooky season. It was going to be this creepy fly look, but I never ended up completing it because I got bored of it after literally an hour. <laughs> it was going to be a big creepy fly, so these were the big fly eyes that I was making. Basically, I just got a little styrofoam ball from Michaels. That's where I get literally everything, and I cut it in half. So I took the two halves, and I hot glued them next to each other, and then over top of it, I put a plaster cloth, so it's kind of like paper mache you know when you do paper mache it's all milky and like watery and runny and then when it hardens it's this hard material it's kind of it's really similar to that you literally wet the plaster cloth and then you put it over whatever you want and then when it dries it hardens in whatever mold or position that you put it in and then like I said I got bored of it so I never used this but then I figured this was perfect for this because this fish needed some giant eyeballs. I just hot glue that to the front of this brim and I kind of have to hold it there for a few seconds to get it to stay in place because it kept falling but once it stayed in place it was good to go. Then I start wrapping the entire thing with a lot of tape and I also go in with a layer of tin foil as well because I am going to be putting a lot of liquid latex on top of this and it's going to get really heavy and I just needed to have a really sturdy base to make sure that none of the liquid latex seeped through the hat or anything weird. I didn't definitely didn't want it to get soggy. <laughs> Then I open up my model magic and I basically just start piling it on the top of the head. I wanted the head to be a lot bigger and taller than it looked, so usually when I'm using my model magic it's to create the bones or the structure of whatever I am trying to achieve. So I had a shape of the head in mind, so I started with the model magic and then kind of built around that with liquid latex paste. Once that dried, I laid out a long strip of model magic and I cut a skinny little piece and kind of created little indents in it and I stuck it where his either, I don't know if they're lips or his gums, I don't know what I was trying to do, but I put something there and I didn't get the footage of it so I kind of showed the aftermath. Okay, so this is what I was talking about. It's just a little strip of clay to separate his eyes and then where his mouth were going to go. Anyway, moving on. So now I'm going to create the teeth. That was Penny. <laughs> So to do that, I take Warbla um, plastic balls. I buy these at Michael's. I use these in almost every single video that I do, and I always talk about them, but I realize I've never actually showed you how I do them or how I use them. And I personally am a visual learner, and you guys might be as well. So I figured I would just show you the whole process. So I literally dump all the little plastic balls out into a bowl, and then I put them in the microwave. I like to get them really melted, so I put them in there for a full three minutes. I actually don't know if you're supposed to put them in that long. I think you're supposed to do little, like, spurts, but I just send it, you know? I'm just, we're going for it. So I put them in there for three minutes, took it out, and then they were completely melted. So the second these start to cool down, the plastic is going to start to harden again. You don't have too much playing time when working with this, but the good thing is you can always go heat it up again and then re-melt it, but I'm just lazy. I didn't want to go back downstairs, so... I was trying to work as quick as I can, so my fish is huge. He needed some big, scary teeth, so I am just molding all of these out, and then I let them dry or harden, I guess, and then they were good to go. So right here, I am just creating more liquid latex paste, and I'm sticking it behind, again, I don't know if those are gums, <laughs> if that's lips, I don't know, but that clay right there, I stick a lot of liquid latex paste behind it and then I stick the teeth inside. Stuck in there, it's going to harden and those are not going to move but I kind of messed up and I didn't wait for the liquid latex paste to dry even a little bit before I stuck the teeth in so it was still really runny so I had to stay in that position and hold those teeth there. For a while, I should have let it harden at least a little bit, get it tacky and then put in the teeth but whatever, it's fine. We sat there for like 45 minutes but you get it. We got there. And this is what they looked like when it was dry. 
So now I'm going to move on to working on the eyes. I bought this pack of clear ornaments from Michaels in July. So you would think because it's, it's July, right? Like you would think these would be cheap. No, that pack was like $30 and I was not happy about it, but they didn't sell singles either. So we're here. I cut them in half. They were just plastic. So I cut two of them in half and I am going to be sticking those on top of the eyes to make it more 3d. So I'm just taking some white paint and I'm covering, covering, Anyway, covering the whole surface area of the eyes just so I don't miss anything. And later on, I'm going to go back in and glue on those two halves. Obviously, now we're just starting painting and I have to paint basically the entire thing orange. It takes a little while. So thank you if you're still here at the end of this video. Like there are so many little things that need to be done. And it's this piece was so time consuming. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I hated it. <laughs> not the piece itself, but I was getting so just I was over it halfway through making this piece I wanted to be done so bad but the end is so worth it anyway I'm gonna shut up actually I'm not <laughs> um so okay so now we're making the bottom half of the fish's mouth this was also not easy I basically took a coat hanger and I broke it apart and I bent it into that u shape so then I wrapped it in tin foil and more tape like I did in the beginning to create a sturdy base because again I'm going to pour a lot of liquid latex paste on top of it did anyone else notice that that was the longest run-on sentence of literally all time Okay, anyway, so obviously I'm adding the liquid latex paste there. I added the teeth and I also added a tongue that I ended up getting rid of later because I just didn't care for it. And then I didn't get the footage, but I did attach the bottom half to the top by just taping it on. You can literally see on the sides, I just attached the bottom to the top with tape. And I also needed to create his little fins or his little, I don't know, antennas, whatever. I just made them out of model magic and then I covered them in a layer of liquid latex. I'm very much giving the same energy to this voiceover as I did when I was actually creating the piece because I was so over it and I'm feeling the same way now if you can't tell because I'm literally not explaining this well. Um, I need to go to bed. Thank you. So I'm obviously just painting at this point. I'm adding a lot of airbrush and I was kind of hating life because this was like day eight maybe, but we're getting there. We're getting to the finish line. Um, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I just bought a coffee. You don't know, but I just left and came back. So now I'm continuing this voiceover and I am, I reevaluated. I'm ready to go. So here I am. I just painted the rest of the orange all over it. And I'm also painting, again, what are those called? Like, hello, what are those called? I painted those orange too. I added black to the inside of the mouth. And then I added a lot of blue and purple around the eyes just to make them a little bit more realistic. This is when I started to have fun with it. I love airbrushing. It really just changes every piece so much. So adding all those little details was really fun. And it adds a lot of shadows and depth to the piece that really make you happy that you trusted the process. Now we're adding those little plastic ornaments that we were working on earlier and I'm just hot gluing those to the center of the eyes. I definitely overestimated the size of these when I was painting them white, but it's okay because once I get those both on there and dry, I just paint over all of the white with orange paint. And then it worked out, it was really cute. Then just going in with some more details with airbrushing, I use a lot of reds and dark maroons to kind of create some shadows and some depth. I also just wanted him to look really just creepy and scary. Like if you're swimming and you catch him in the ocean, he's going to get you. Like that's the vibes. He's going to snatch you right up. You're done. And I'm done because now I'm going to start putting this on. So I paint my whole chest green to start. And then I start applying some pieces that I created before I started applying this. I just took some paper and I basically cut them in the shapes of some underwater grass and I painted them green, added a little airbrush to them, some highlighting, and then I just stuck them onto my chest with some prosade glue. This actually was painful to get off, but beside the point. Then I airbrushed my entire face red, and yes, it did stain for several days. This look really tested me, let me tell you. And then I look peak psychotic when I protect my hair with saran wrap, and thank God we are finally done. 